I am so fired up coming to talk to you guys today. Welcome to our two o'clock training. Alliance Nation. Uh, we, we are excited about this. Uh, we got Megan Wood with us. We got Paul Minichino with us. Uh, Katrina Gustin and Marcus Richardson will be joining us as well. And um, what we're going to do today is this. Uh, we, we're just going to talk about, um, you know, I, I'm really just here to uh, to kind of host and ask some questions. But the, the stars of the show are Megan and Paul and Marcus and, and Katrina. Um, and we're, what we're looking at is this, that if you, if you look at how business has been over the last, uh, last few weeks, um, you know, since a lot of the nation has gone into lockdown, uh, you know, just how, how are people able to, to keep their minds right? How are people able to keep their businesses right? And, and uh, these four have definitely not had a slowdown. There hasn't been a let up in anything that they've been doing. Uh, in fact, if anything, I think they're even more productive and, and more profitable than, than they've ever been. Um, so, Megan, why don't we start with you, uh, if that's okay. Um, if you would, I, I saw what you posted on Band uh, yesterday, so uh, why don't we start with that. Uh, you know, uh, tell, tell us about your numbers from, uh, from last week and, uh, and kind of what you got cooking business-wise. Yeah, yeah. So I just appreciate being on this call. So thank you. Um, a couple things that I have done. I set 20,000 as my goal. So I upped my goal for the week. Um, yeah, that was the best I've ever done in a week. So <laughs> it's hard work. It's hard work. And it's a lot of fun. Okay. Um, so the thing, go ahead. What so were you going to say? When you, when you say you set your goal for at what point did you do that? Were you like, kind of before you even started, you were like, I'm going to do 20 this week. Yep. Yep. That's exactly what I did. And I actually told Andy Albright that I was going to do 20,000. So I definitely felt like, oh my gosh, this is what I need to do. <laughs> so okay. I made it, I made it a point to get that. Um, I invested in more leads. I set my schedule. Um, you know, and I was always constantly thinking and doing something and calling people constantly. Um, and what I think is great is, is that we're all, we're all new, right? Because we just started in the telesales. So everybody is like at the same level, everybody in each other, everybody is learning. And I just think it's amazing that everybody's helping each other out because I would have never been able to do it without, Mike and Noel and the team and I even had a few people come over you know to do telesales as well and I mean it's just the communication is what helps you make your goals um I think the communication is huge for sure so Megan talk to us a little bit about your schedule um so you did 20,000 this week. What was that? Like 35 applications, I believe is what you posted or 30. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. How, many, how, um, many days, how many days were you working this week? How many days on the phone? I, I worked Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Monday through Thursday, I just squeezed in a few appointments um, when I could. Mm -hmm. So... I had my boy through the week, so I just squeezed in a few. I would get up early, um, do a couple appointments then um, before he woke up. And just like if we were in the car and my mom was driving somewhere, I was in the back calling people. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm just, I'm constantly thinking about what can I do? What can I do? And so this weekend, um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I was on the phone from and working from 7 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. constantly. Um, I even left to get signatures. I was calling people I knew while I was in the car, letting them know about hospital home from getting a signature. Um, I'm just constantly thinking about who am I gonna help next? What am I going to do next? Um, that's, I think that's one of the biggest things that, you know, we all just need to think about who have I helped 
and what can I help them out with next? What will they be needing next? Because we offer so many different products and there's so much more help that people are needing, right? So, I mean, if we sell them life insurance, we can go back because they might be interested in a hospital indemnity plan. And I always think that if I don't offer that to them and I call them next month, they can, what if they told me that they just got out of the hospital and they were in there for three days? Because if it was up to me, they would be sitting there with over a thousand dollars in their pocket. But because I didn't call them and I didn't reach out to them, they're sitting there with nothing but hospital bills. So it's up to us to follow up with our clients. And I think that makes a huge difference as well. And not just clients from a long time ago, but clients that you helped out the past week, clients that you helped out three days ago. I mean, you want to touch base with them. I helped out on Wednesday. I called her back on Friday and I helped her out with a hospital indemnity plan. So I'm not waiting weeks and weeks and weeks. I'm following up with these people on a regular basis. Okay. So, so with, with that said, so um, are you planning the seed? So you called her Wednesday and you did the life sale. And then you called her Friday due to the hospital indemnity sale. Did you, mm -hmm. did you know on Wednesday that you were calling her on Friday? Was that already worked out on, as you wrapped up your life sale with her on Wednesday? Did you say, now we're also going to do this for you and I'll call you back on Friday? Or was that kind of a... No, no, I didn't tell her that. Um, I usually, when I help somebody out with a life sale, I say, you know, I'm going to call you here in a couple of days, let you know that you're approved. Um, obviously she didn't get approved in that much time. And that's what I typically do. Mm -hmm. um, but I just called her and I, there was a couple of things to do about, but I, I knew things were a little chaotic at the time and we were on the phone for a while on Wednesday. So I figured I would go ahead and call you now and let you know about these things because they've really helped out a lot of people. And then I get right into, have you ever heard of a hospital indemnity plan? They're like, no, no. And so that's kind of what I do. Like I said, when I'm helping a person out with a life insurance policy, I'm actually thinking about what else can I do for that person? What else will benefit that one person? And then I write it down, right? I try and write everything down and I think, okay, so if I'm busy this day, or if I don't have like a lot of leads or I've got some extra time, I'm going to call her and I'm going to try and help her out with a hospital indemnity plan. Just constantly thinking about what else you can do for them. Just like with bits and pieces of things they say. So, so is there something that this woman said that kind of triggered in the back of your mind I'm going to be following up with her on hospital indemnity. Is it a certain age demographic you look at or is it, is you, you just got it or is, are you just doing this with everybody regardless? Um, she said that she was in the hospital in the past. I mean, because we can kind of get clues like that. Um, when you ask them the health questions, you know, and, then they kind of give you some things like that. So, I mean, it wasn't for anything serious, but knowing that she's been in the hospital and I basically talked to like anybody over the age of 40, it can benefit from. And I always bring up the coronavirus right now because um, what if, you know, heaven forbid, what if somebody gets diagnosed with the coronavirus and they have to go into the hospital I mean, people are dying. People are getting sick. So many people are getting sick every day, you know? So, I mean, either, you know, something's going to happen. We're all going to get put in the hospital at some time, even if it's for, you know, anything, you know what I'm saying? And so I would much rather if I had to go into the hospital, know that I'm going to be paid for it than not. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Um, and I would love to have one myself, but I'm not 40, so I can't. But I'll get when one I do, for you. <laughs> <laughs> right? And I tell people that too. Um, 
Megan, how did you did you come into this? I, I know I know your your backstory, and I think oh, well. I mean, if, if you want to want to give us a, a snippet of your backstory, uh, when when you got started with us at the Alliance, and you got started in the insurance industry, I mean, we we have agents that have been with us for for ten years that that are still all they can sell is the life insurance. You know, they, they, they just, they have folio, the repertoire of hospital indemnity, cancer plans, uh, you know, the Medicare advantages, the, you know, even, even things like annuities. And I, how long did it take you to kind of be like, you know what, I got a lot more to offer people. T tell me about your mindset on, on how you got educated on all of this and how you started um, developing that value package beyond just a life sale. Well, I mean, I just figured, I mean, so instead of spending what I was thinking, instead of like tripling my money to get extra clients, why don't I go back to the same clients and help them out with something else? You know what I mean? And then, so what happened was, is I was going, I would sell the life policy and then I'm like, well, I could have helped them out with an accidental on top of their life policy. So then I was going back and helping my, all my clients out with the accidental. Then I found out about the critical illness policy and I'm like, oh my gosh, so many of my clients could benefit from this. My dad had it. My dad was diagnosed with cancer. Um, he benefited from the critical illness. So I tell people that. And, you know, and then we started coming out with the HMA. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my God, this is just another thing that I can help my clients out with. And it's just like, we just keep benefiting from more of these products. It's like, you need to reach out to all the people that you've helped and one, they've already liked you and they already trust you. So you can really benefit from, you know, helping them even more. And there's even more like products. I mean, like we're getting pr new products all the time. And then when I got my A hit, um, <laughs> when I got my a hip, I was able to help them out with, um, you know, Medicare Advantage plans and stuff like that. So it's just always something that we're doing. Right, right. right. You know, how much are you using the the CRM? I know uh, Robbie, Robbie and Andy have been working very hard on, you know, upgrading Arc and the this new CRM you know, with the birthdays and the policy reviews and all of that. Uh, how, how much of that are you able to now incorporate into what you're doing as well? I'm super excited about it. Like, I'm fired up that, like, I know where their birthdays are, so I'm fired up that I can call them and be like, happy birthday, you know, I was thinking about you. And they didn't even know that it just shows up there, so they think that I you know, remember that it was their birthday. <laughs> they think we're that um, organized. <laughs> right, right. I try to be. Um, but, you know, I love it. I love the fact that, you know, the 65-year-old age is coming in. And I saw a couple of people that were turning 65. I'm like, awesome. Wait, I already helped out those people with a Medicare Advantage plan. <laughs> like, so... So I can't wait, you know, I'm really excited about it, you know, um, and it's funny because the reviews and stuff like that, because I've been going back to my prior clients, I'm like, I've already talked to these people, you know, like these aren't any like new people for me, you know what I mean? Because I just helped them out just, you know, last month, you know what I mean? So I'm excited about it. Um, but here recently, I have been, you know, doing the Facebook leads and stuff like that, getting more of a flow coming in. And, you know, I mean, with everybody else's numbers posting up, you know, I'm excited because we've never, like, for me anyways, is, you know, I always try to do as much as I can, but we've never had an opportunity like this to do as much as what we're doing. Like, it's amazing. Um, my goals always used to be, I want to do 10,000 a week, 10,000. Then I started noticing that I was doing more than 10,000. And I, I love, I love Megan that, that what it sounds like is you just compete with yourself. You're not worried about what, what the leaderboards are saying. You're not worried about what anybody else is doing. You're just, you're just trying to become the best version of yourself and helping your clients out. 
Um, one last question, uh, and, and then, then we'll move on to our, our next guest. Uh, out of the 35 applications you did last week, how many of those were from new sales versus uh, current clients just circling back around with some of your current clients? Um, over half of them were current clients. <laughs> Okay, over half were current. That that is amazing, and I mean it's it's, uh, and I know you've only been around for for less than two years, uh, so uh, you know to think of the opportunity that every all of us have on our current clients, and me looking at my CRM and realizing how many clients I have in my database, yeah. and it's it just just yeah. crazy opportunities to to do that. Well, Megan, congratulations. Uh, thank you uh, for once again sharing with us and uh, once again setting the pace and, and being an example we all can point to. Congratulations on all your success and, um, you so and much. appreciate your time joining us today. Yes, thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, Marcus Richardson, why don't we jump to you next? How are you doing, brother? I'm doing great, Adam. How are you? I am fantastic. Good to see you, man. You're looking now, do good. we have snow in Denver? I know it was snowing in other places. <laughs> what was that? I said you're looking good. Good to see you. It just melted, though. The snow we just, did, but... just melted. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. We're we are. Uh, it's overcast in Wilmington. For for those of you, uh, it's actually a little chilly. I got my long sleeve Vamp shirt on. Uh, I, hey, one of the things about going on all these trips is is all the swag we get that we can. Yeah, my brother is like, "Do you own anything that doesn't say Alliance on it?" And I was like, "Not really." <laughs> it's like, why do I need to own things? That don't say Alliance on it? So, all right. So, uh, so, so, Marcus, you you have been kicking butt, taking names. Uh, Andy's had you on a lot of these calls. Um, talk to us about. Uh, you know, especially in, in the, the last month or so since we've transitioned, how much of your work are you doing telesales versus are you still going to see people in the home? Um, actually, Adam, the last three weeks going on four weeks have been all over the phone um, sales. They shut us down here in Colorado. I think it was like the 13th or 14th of March. I had a few in-home appointments trying to face to face. And then that following week, they started sending out all the messages, you know, to the masses about, hey, don't go out unless it's essential. I know we're essential, but a lot of times the clients that I work with are over the age of 60, um, you know, over the age of 65. And so they're kind of like, eh, you know, I really don't want you coming over here. So on the phone, I just give it to it right now. Let's, let's talk about it. Let's figure out how I can help you now. Is there a special transition phrase you have to to get people to close deals on the phone uh or how, how are you kind of starting the conversation with them to, to to do the appointment and let me ask you this first so when are you scheduling appointments for later to, to circle back around with them okay my, lose you? my connection was a yeah, my connection was a little blurry. Can you hear me okay, Adam? Uh, yes, I, I can now. You, you were a little okay. technically first, but now you're good. I apologize. Can you re-ask your question? Because it was time. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Are you, uh, are you doing appointments right then when you get them on the phone? Uh, or are you scheduling appointments to circle back around with them later in the day or the next day? Both. So if I'm, when I first call them, my intention is to do the appointment right now. So when I call them, it will go something like this. So I would call you and say, hey, Adam, this is Marcus with the Senior Benefit Center. I was getting back to you about that postcard you had sent in to get some information on the state regulated final expenses and to see how you can qualify for those plans. And then I just simply ask them, um, you got a second for us to go through that now? I can see how you qualify or is sometime later today or tomorrow better for you? If they say I got time now, then we're hitting it now, let's, let's go. Or if they say, you know what, can you give me a buzz back tomorrow? Then I go into the regular setting the appointment, you know, what time works good for you, what time you're home from work, you still work and you essential, that kind of thing. Okay. What, what have you found to be the big differences between what you're doing in the home versus uh, being able to close deals on the, on the phone? Um, talking to more people, you know, um, having the more and more appointments, just being able to get in front of more people. That, that's been a huge difference for me. And then I think that the biggest thing, and I'm still working on this, Adam, is slowing down on the phone and helping them develop their why um, and really connecting. And I've noticed the ones that I have been able to help on the phone is because I've done a conservative, conscious effort of slowing it down, 
not making it real business, but making it more of like a conversation like you and I are having here, you know, asking about the kids, the family and, and having a regular in-home appointment. So those sales normally take me about an hour to an hour and a half because that's about how my normal in-home goes. Okay. Uh, now, now give us some numbers. How, how's, how's your last week been? How's your last month been? Uh, uh, give us some numbers about what you've been able to accomplish. Um, so last week, well, last month of March, it finished out at 36. Well, it's weird because the contest thing says 39,000 and I was going for 40. So I'm still bummed. And then, um, <laughs> <laughs> and then the last few weeks, so, uh, last week we did 60, I think it was 66 or 6,900 week okay. before that we did about 7,300. And then the week prior to that, we did about, I want to say like 11,000. Um, okay. again, it's this transition and really, just making a bunch of mistakes. I remember that time I took you to the airport and you had asked me if I liked the results that I was getting. And I said, no. And you said, well, the good news is, Marcus, we're in a business where you're self-employed. So you can fire the old Marcus and you can hire the new Marcus tomorrow. And I was like, I like that. So every day I'm, I'm firing the old guy and I'm bringing in the new guy with his top hat ready to get to work. That's, that's awesome. Uh, not that, not, I don't, uh, I must have stolen that from Andy Albright, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> it was good, um, though. I'll take credit for it. <laughs> um, that, that, that's cool. That's cool. So uh, has your schedule changed at all, or are you still basically following the same schedule you were following previously? What, what, tell, tell us about what a, a week in the life of Marcus Richardson looks like business-wise. You got it, Adam. So that's probably one of the biggest changes that I've made. My schedule has actually changed. So I'm on the phones by 8 a.m. And I'll do my first round of dials because I've noticed that the later I go on the daytime, I get less contacts. So that I'll go from about 8 to 11, 11.30. Then I get up, take lunch, go check on the wife and kids, see what they're doing. We might go for a walk, get some fresh air. Um, and then I try to get back on the phones by around 3 because that's when a lot of my evening appointments, mortgage protection people are getting off of work, starting to get that work commute home. And then I go till about eight um, and that's Monday through Friday. And then Saturday is my normal. I would normally previously, I would normally call on Saturdays from eight to 12 and then um, hang out with the family the rest of the day. So my Saturday is still there. I'm still working on Saturday and I'm just taking that eight to about 12, eight to about one. And then if I have follow-up calls, I'll do them Saturday evening. So that's kind of how my schedule changes. And Sunday, I'm kind of, you know, it's my Sabbath, if you will. I hang out with the family. We, you know, watch movies or go out and kind of do what we can do in this, in this new environment that we're in. Very cool. Very cool. Um, so are, are you, you heard again talking about how she circles back around with her clients. Uh, are, are you, are you doing a lot of secondary sales that was posted just came out in the last what, three days, I believe, uh, where we're having access to all that information and it's, it's just getting better and better every day, but it, it just blows my mind. Uh, how, do you, how do you foresee using the CRM in your current client base, uh, you know, balancing that out with the lead flow and all of that? Oh, it's huge, Adam. It's, it's powerful. I, you know, in my spreadsheet, I actually track where my sales come from, whether it's current client, lead, um, Facebook lead, and honestly, man, the majority of my sales this year have been off of my current clients and off of referrals. So if that's where I'm making the most of my money, that's where I need to be investing the most of my time because that's giving me the biggest return. So I am going back through and calling my current clients. They already know me. So it's an easier conversation. That's where I'm finding my annuities at. And it's also, um, you know, just checking in like what Megan was saying. Now, one thing that I'm going to get better at is I'm going to make it a point to start learning how to sell these ancillary products. So I'm telling on myself, I have not <laughs> hospital indemnities, but you have my word, Adam, in front of everybody that I'm <laughs> going to learn this and I'm going to write me some apps, baby. <laughs> I'm, going make, I'm going to make that happen because I think a real good add on because they already know us. If they don't need life insurance, they probably do need some of the indemnity stuff. So I'm going to make it a point to get better at that. Yeah, it, it just, and, and I mean, the more you, uh, and, you know, congratulations, Ivy Wilson and the folks from Medco that are doing all of these seminars for us on, on training on, on the, the Medco products and the, the hospital indemnity, the cancer plans, all of that stuff. It, it's, you know, it, it does seem like it's such a no brainer. Have you actually checked, do you know how many current clients you actually have in the CRM? Yeah, 2,236. 
<laughs> yeah, that, that, that ought to keep you a little busy. <laughs> um, yes. So, that, that's good stuff. I love how it shows you who's due for a six month policy review and a 12 month policy review also. Uh, Incredible. And, and the birthdays, just call me. Hey, I mean, like Megan was talking about, I've called up a couple of mine on their birthdays and they're just, you know, it's, the, the cool part is you don't even have to remember who they are because you obviously you have 2000, you don't remember every single one of your clients. Do you? I ain't going to pretend, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, there's that connection and that, that's the beauty of it. Um, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so Marcus, I know you're also building a business and, and you know, uh, tracking AM and beyond what, what, how are you incorporating in the recruiting side to your business on top of what you're doing on the sales side? I'm still posting the Craigslist ads and I have that set for me to do my Craigslist follow-ups on Wednesdays. Um, I do, I have checked in with a couple of agents that have fallen off. I still haven't quite sent the zip whip and done that, but that is on the category for me to get done too. And it's really just like, kind of like the phone sales, more agents, the more people I talk to that are wanting to go, let's, let's go. So um, that's kind of what I've been doing on a consistent basis. Every, every week is just making sure I'm talking to enough people and again, I need to get that number up as well, Adam, but I can fire the old Marcus and hire the new guy. Um, so that's the point that we're going to focus on the next 90 days, you know, talking to as many people on the interview side as possible, because um, now is a perfect time to sell insurance. And uh, I mean, what, what are they, 22 million people unemployed right now? And uh, it's a lot of people have lost their job. And how about even the ones who kept it? You know, how about you hedge your bets for the next go round that happens like this? You know, so a lot, a lot of folks open to part time opportunities, if not full time career changes. Um, so, so Marcus, uh, talk, g give me, you know, as, as, we're, as we're kind of wrapping up with you here, give me uh, something, a brand new person wanting to get started strong uh, you know what would you say in terms of lead mix uh you mentioned you're busier now than you've ever been in terms of just more activity trying to run more appointments because you can do it on the phone what, how would how would you tell a new person to invest in themselves and and put themselves in a position when business wise good good question so again when it comes to the business i would i would tell you to one set up a schedule set up a calendar that you can consistently commit to and work it like a job, like a regular J-O-B, six to eight hours a day on the phones, if not more, right? Because you got a learning curve. That would be the first thing I would tell them is go through that schedule because you're going to have a learning curve. And then the second thing I would say is try to learn at the most least expensive way that you can, but get as many of them as you can. So I like those Facebook leads because you can get them at 10, 15 bucks a pop. Andy has reduced the, um, the um, leads on based on what your contract is. So now we're all getting the leads at the 55 contract, any lead that's at A1 and below. So for me, that's powerful because you honestly can get 40 leads for 300 bucks, direct mail, um, mortgage protection, final expense, the whole deal. So that would be one of the biggest things I would say, make sure that they are getting educated as much as they can. Cause you know, with everything that's going on and the change that's happening, we get a lot of negative information, a lot of stuff bombarding us. So I would say in your schedule, put in times to guard your mind, you know, whether it's late at night reading, early in the morning reading, um, but listening to the right audios, listening to the right people, being on calls like this. But that would be the biggest thing is not listening to the negative influences, even the negative voices that are in our own head as we make these transitions and not letting them slow us down, make sure we're reading books because these are the best times that we've ever had. And it's going to be determined by what we do. It's all about the mindset, isn't it? It is. So, well, Marcus, thank you so much for jumping on the call with us and, and joining us and, and sharing those tips with Alliance Nation. Um, Katrina Gustin, uh, if you can unmute yourself, we're going to save Paul Minichino to back clean up for us. <laughs> Katrina, it looks like you're still muted. I can unmute her. Oh, there's Katrina. I see a picture. Still muted though. I think her, her sign language said one minute, Adam. That's what it oh. said. Oh, one minute, okay. <laughs> was one minute. No <laughs> I got this. I was watching and I could see it that she was finishing up an application or something important. Okay. Uh, well, Katrina, we will come back to you and we'll, we'll swing over to Paul if that's cool. Sorry. 
Uh, oh, no, <laughs> you, you are good. Hey, we do not want to slow down progress. Uh, so, Paul, you, we'll, we'll, we'll jump over to you, brother. Um, oh, I got a background. Hold on. Oh, I like it. Virtual background. I'm going to turn it off. Boom. There's my real background. There's your real wow. background. <laughs> Wearing your boom shirt. I love it. <laughs> um, that's right. <laughs> uh, so, so Paul, you um, ju just talk to us about the decision making. I know you've had a lot of conversations with with Andy Albright uh, in terms of over the last month, six weeks. You, you kind of just made some decisions uh, to to just kind of change your, your thought process and all that. Talk to us about uh, a couple things. One, what, what got you thinking? First of all, what, what are you thinking? And two, what got you thinking that way? And how important is it to be plugged in uh, and building that relationship with Andy Albright? Absolutely, man. And, uh, you know, I'm sitting here listening to you and Marcus, and uh, I'm listening to, uh, to uh, Megan talk, and I'm just thinking, like, you guys fired me up. Like, you know, like, being plugged into the system gets me excited. Like, I got to get excited, too. And I feel like, you know, if we, if we kick back two months, three months, I was okay with issue paying 20 grand a month. And that was okay to me because I knew if I run my 20 appointments a week, you know, 25 appointments a week, I'll issue pay about 240 by the end of the year. And that's been okay for me, right? Like that's been like my cash flow and I've been spending time recruiting. And then I'm just, I was just, I just got kind of pissed off one day, Adam, to be honest. And, uh, you know, I just, I've always heard you either build this business mad or you build it glad and glad hasn't worked for me, right? Like it hasn't been working the way I wanted it to. And, uh, right. and so I just got mad, man. I started thinking about like where I am in business, where I am financially, like I'm not as far as I thought I'd be by now. And the only person I can blame on that is me, right? Like I could look at all these outside sources and say, Hey, it's the, it's the world we're living in. You know, it's my wife, it's my kids, it's, it's this, it's that, you know, I'm trying to be a good dad. Like, duh, I'm trying to be a good dad. I'm a dad. Like, of course I'm trying to be a good dad. But like, I just started looking inward more and thinking like, man, if someone's going to change the way it is right now in my life, it's got to be me. And so I got, I started hearing Andy talking about this 20 appointments a week, 30 appointments a week. Like, and I was just like, you know what, when I was new, I always heard him say, you know, 15 to 20 appointments a week. And when I was new, I always said, well, if they're going to do 15 to 20, I'm going to do 25 to 30, you know, just because I wanted to make up the work ethic. And I know this is that I'm willing to outwork just about anybody. So if I'm willing to do the work, like why not now? So I started thinking about my kids. I started thinking about like, I got two girls, right? I got college to pay for it, right? I never thought about going to college because my parents weren't gonna pay for it, right? It wasn't really an option for me. I got college to pay for it. I got cars to buy, I got weddings to pay for. And I just started thinking, why not just stack the cash now? Why not just go out and make another extra 150, 250,000 like now? and then put the money aside, right? So that's my initial goal is like, let me just go ahead and put an extra 150 grand in the bank outside of everything else we got going on and then move on from there. And uh, you know, that's just what I've been doing. I've been running 40 appointments a week, man. Nothing like, nothing crazy. We're talking to them about what their schedule's been, like how many days they're running, like five, six days a week. Like I'm, I've, I ran appointments five days a week, hold on. Last week I was on the phone. Yeah. Five days out of the week I was on the phone this week. I'm going to be on the phone seven days. So today is actually, it's, it's my anniversary today. Right. And I'm working. Right. So like me and Sam got married seven years ago today. And uh, you know, like in my head, I'm like, should I take the day off? I'm like, no, I shouldn't take the day off. We'll hang out later. Like we've got stuff planned later. It'll be fine. And so it's just like, it's that desire that I've got to keep getting around the people. Like when I hear, when I look at Marcus Richardson, like he's been above me on the leaderboard for the last two years. Right. And for the first time in two years, I just passed him on the leaderboard. Right. And like, that may not be important to everybody, but like, and it's not like, here's what I hope, right. I hope that Marcus picks up the pace. Right. It's not, it's not like I'm trying to beat Marcus. I'm trying to beat me. I'm trying to, I'm trying to pass my personal best ever. And my hope is that everybody else at the top of the leaderboards does the same thing. Like let's all pick up the pace together and bring the whole company with us, right? It's not just like, I'm not, I don't care what anybody else in the world does. I'm trying to issue pay 40,000 plus a month. And so everything else is going to work out from there. Right. Um, isn't it crazy? I mean, there, there are people listening to this. Uh, you know, a couple of things that, that jumped to my mind. One is, you know, I, I work, you know, when, when school was, well, not 
teachers today, right? But, uh, you know, uh, you just showed up and did your job. When you had a job, you, you showed up and you did your job. And I was doing that for $1,700 a month take-home pay, you know, after 10 years of being a school teacher. And, and it's like, the, for you to be able to say, you know, I just figured why not stack up an extra hundred, dollars 150000 in the bank this year? Talk to me more about that, because there are people, they listen to that and they're like, there's no way, I don't know people who make that kind of money, let, uh, let alone an additional, that kind of money. Um, so, so what is it, just tell us about how you can create that extra 150000 that you're talking about. Yeah, well, and it's uh, that's great because really, if you if you're selling life insurance right now and paying your bills, I'm fired up for you, and you can sell more of it and you can make more money. But Megan's on the right track. She's talking about these additional products. You know, I think after this week, I'll issue pay 14 annuities so far this year, right? And like it's only April. I plan on issue paying more and more and more. I got a two hundred thousand dollar one I just wrote. I got a hundred thousand dollar one impending. I got a thirty three thousand dollar one impending. I got a ten thousand dollar one. I just got to fill out the paperwork. I got six hundred thousand dollars I'm working on right now. I got another three hundred thousand I'm working on right now, and like that's barely even me. Like I'm going after my life insurance stuff and just finding that on the side. Like I'm not focused on that, but yet I'm focused on it. Meaning, like if I find someone that's got some money, I'm slowing down and I'm having the conversation. Like I look at all my old clients and I'm just like, ah, oh. like you understand on a fifty-five percent contract, if you write a three hundred thousand dollar annuity, that's like extra ten, twelve grand in your bank account depending on the annuity. So you're saying, well, how do you make another hundred, hundred thousand dollars in a year? Just issue 10 of those. You know what I mean? Just go out and find the money and there's your extra hundred thousand, you know, put an extra day of work in a week and then find somebody that wants to do it with you. So I got a band of warriors that want to do it with me. So it's not just me, right? Like it's not just me at all. And I'm just talking trash to them about let's get rich. Like, why not now? Like, let's just get rich together. And then, you know, six years from now, when you got kids, because y'all don't got kids yet, then we can, then you'll have money for your kids. Why don't you save up the money for your kids before you have them? And don't be a re re like me and wait till they're nine years old. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I know, like I've, at least I have an opportunity that I can, I can make up for the lost time. Right. Because like you said, Adam, there's a ton of people in America that you get behind on saving for your kids' education and you ain't making it up. There's no way to do it. But here you can go out there and you can put the money away. Like you can, you can, Go out and do the work you need to do and just put the money away, you know, and, and invest. So, are, obviously, you're, you're, you've elevated your, your annuity game big time, it sounds like. Uh, are, you, are you doing something specific? Or is it just a matter of paying more attention to it? Or are there transition questions you're asking that people probably aren't thinking about that, that you have thought about? How are you finding all this money? Uh, so I'm finding the money by asking about it, you know, like, Hey, so, you know, are you like a lot of the people, are you like a lot of the seniors I've talked to today? Have you lost money in your retirement savings? And they're like, well, yeah. And then I'll say like, you know, most seniors are more concerned about running out of money than they are dying. Are you kind of like in that category? And I just kind of have conversations with them. And I also know that like we have products and programs where people can't lose any money in a place where they just lost 30% of their assets, right? Like if you look at the market, people lost between 20 to 30%. So if you lost 30% of your money, you have to gain 42% just to get back to where you left off, right? So knowing that, it's just like, like learn about this kind of stuff. Like I've always, I've always thought about getting better at this stuff, Adam. Like it's so funny. Like I'm like, huh, I could be great at this. Like, and I was like, why don't I just freaking stop messing around and put in the effort I know I'm capable of? And then at the end of 90 days, I can look back and say, all right, you know, like, all right, there was one or two weeks. I can look back in the last month and say, there's, there's a week and a half where I didn't do as good as I should have. But what, what Marcus just said is I fired that guy and hired the good me back, right? Like that guy's gone, right? Yesterday's gone. And I can't hold myself in contempt for that. All I can do is move forward into the new, the new, the new deal. And, and I promise you this, Adam, I've lost more annuities than most people have tried to rent, right? Like, you know what I mean? Like I've lost hundreds, I've lost millions of dollars already this year that I probably could have wrote just cause I didn't know the product. I told, I had one client, I pitched the whole deal, got him to sign everything. And I, I completely told him the wrong thing. And I had to go back and retell him the correct information. 
And like, you know, I'm still working on that case, right? It didn't go through yet. Like, mm, weird enough, you know? <laughs> so it's just, it's just trying to figure it out, man. Okay. Um, so have you checked your CRM? Do you know how many current clients you have? It's ridiculous. It's like 3,700 and some odd clients. Do you, yeah. oh, so how, how are you planning to use, now that we have this new tool, how are you planning to use, use it uh, as just another prong in your attack? So the one thing I really like about it is uh, it's, I've been, I, I have birthdays already listed in my phone. I call people every one to two years. Uh, I've been doing that. I like the conversion thing that it has up. I think that's really cool. Um, but more, more importantly, like I'm going into my files, I'm going into agents that are with me, like, hey, did you know that this is available to you right now? Like, do you know you have 13 conversions to do this month? And then like, I almost want to say like, hey, if you don't call them, I'm going to. Like, like, like if you don't get it done, somebody's going to, right? And so it's crazy because with everything that's happened right now and doing everything over the phone at them, like I'm now calling, like my sister had clients in Pennsylvania for when she worked with us six years ago that I never called because I don't go up to Pennsylvania very much, you know? So now I'm like calling her old clients and being like, oh, well, hey, like, you know, you're due for a review. And it's just opened up a whole nother, whole nother asset that we never had before. And it's just crazy, man. Like, I, I can't believe it tells you how many people you have to convert this month, how many six month reviews, how many 12 months reviews, you know, who's turning 65. Like, that's insane to me, man. We never, like, I've been, I have 28 different spreadsheets with all this stuff, trying to keep all my data together. And now it's just all in one spot, you know? Now, and, and, and guys, these conversion deals are a real deal. I just had a client call me this you know, right before the call and her, her policy is, is coming to an end. Now she's too old for a conversion, but she still fits into a 10 year term policy that she, that she wants. And as soon as the call's over, I'm going to jump on the phone with her and do an e app. Uh, she's up in, uh, up in another state and, you know, $193 a month. We've already talked about our product and what she's going to do. I just need to get on the phone with her and do the e app. And it's just like, she called me. Now with the CRM and the conversions and knowing when everything is, it's just going to get easier and easier for us to make sure that we're not dropping the ball on following up with these folks. Um, Paul, last thing, uh, a tip to a person, new person. Or maybe not even. A new person, but somebody who's been with us that is ready to change their mind, ready to change, change the way they look at you, like you're doing. Uh, I would really do, say, do man, like if you anybody just get yourself, say again. No, you're good. Okay, you were breaking up a little bit, so I thought I thought you were done there. So, um, but I would I would really say that the uh, the thing I can tell you is just. If you can just get yourself moving, right, just make that first phone call, make that second phone call, and just keep moving, right? Like, keep going, and don't slow down, because when you slow down, like, an object in motion stays in motion, so keep that motion going, right? Unless you're acted upon by another force, like, that's some kind of law somewhere I read about or learned about. I never forgot that since school, so it's like, I haven't remembered a lot, but I remember that, and so... If you can just get going, like when somebody doesn't pick up the phone, I'm texting, I'm calling, I'm emailing, I'm trying to get another app. The people that I have that, that aren't ready, like I have a place in the dungeon in my basement and I got an office upstairs, right? I got two places that I'm working at right now. I have a paper on the wall of all the clients of people that I need to follow up with. So in between people not answering, I'm calling and getting an app that I should have had last week or someone that said they were interested that I couldn't quite get done. So just keep moving and keep getting stuff done and don't, uh, don't slow down. I mean, that's really the, the biggest thing I can say is just keep it rocking and, uh, and just know that there's plenty of people out here that, you know, some days are great, some days are a struggle, but if you just get your butt going and keep working, it's all going to work out in your favor, you know, and I, just keep working. That's awesome. Well, thank you, Paul, for joining us and, and, and sharing with the Alliance family today. Thanks for having me. Um, Katrina Gustin. Absolutely. Uh, Katrina, can you, are you, are you good now? Can I'm you unmute? Good. Oh, you, you are unmuted. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Um, 
fired up to have you on the call. I was talking to, you know, and what, what I'm hearing, what I love about this is, uh, you know, listening to Paul and Megan and, and Marcus already, and I, I know we're going to hear the same thing from Katrina, is everybody's competing to become their best version of themselves. Uh, you know, and uh, I told this story to, uh, to my team earlier today. Um, when I was in high school, I had, I had a good buddy. Uh, we worked together at a seafood restaurant and we would play tennis quite a bit before work. And, um, and there was this guy that worked with us that was really good in, in tennis. You know, we played college tennis, the whole thing. So he actually knew how to play. We were just kind of whacking the ball around. Uh, and he asked us, you know, we, we went to him for some pointers and he asked us what our goals were. And I told him my goal was just to be able to beat David. And, and David, my friend, said, my goal is to get better. And so while initially I was beating David because I, I played a little bit more, I was a little bit better than he was at the beginning, because he was focused on getting better and becoming a better player, not focused on what I was doing, he all of a sudden got a lot better than me and started smoking me. And, and that's what I'm hearing from everybody on the call is, Nobody's, nobody's competing against somebody else. They're competing to become the best version of themselves and, and, and competing just to get better with, within themselves and with their business. Uh, and, and so Katrina, uh, I know you've been kicking butt, taking names. Andy's had you on a lot of calls recently uh, talking about all the success that you're having. Um, so so uh, if you would just kind of talk to us a little bit about some of the results that you've been having recently and, and kind of where you are business-wise. Um, Business-wise, I think it's probably been the best time ever for me. Um, it started back in November is when I started just really ramping it up. And mainly because I had, I was just working my butt off. I had some things issuing and, and I realized at the end of November that I had like just under $37,000 issue. And so it was like, bing light bulb went off in my head like oh wait i can do 30,000 plus a month what's 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 the problem like did you not know you could do that before no i really didn't honestly um when andy had when andy had put you know put numbers up and you know they went off a seal team and then it was seal team 6 and seal team this and that and the other i was so discouraged because in my mind i was thinking 20 is a lot. I can't do 25 or 30 or 35. That's pathetically ridiculous. Like who does that? You know, so I, I was thinking that that wasn't possible. And, and frankly, that was my mindset at that point in time. And it was for a long time. And the problem with that mindset is that of course I wasn't going to do it because I didn't think that I could. And that's pretty, that's, that's been pretty huge for me. Um, I don't know if I am saying it the right way when I tell people, but the only reason I'm doing this is because I know that I can. That's it. That's, that's, that is, I, I promise you that that's all there is to it. You do it and you kind of figure out your groove and, and in your mind, if, as long as you feel comfortable with that, heck yeah. Mike, Mike says it all the time. You're Katrina effing Gustin. What are you <laughs> thinking? You know? And, and I, and I love that. And he only says effing, by the way, he doesn't add anything else in just letting y'all know. Way to go, Mike. Good. <laughs> Being good. But I mean, the point, the point is, is if you have, if you have in your mind that you can do something, I mean, God made our minds far more powerful than we give any credit for. And the problem with that is if you don't know what you can do, you're not going to do it. You're not going to achieve it anywhere close to it unless it's just by accident and then all of a sudden you know it's almost like it wasn't by accident it was work right I mean I, I actually did something in November but it was kind of accidental that it came up with that number for me because it wasn't it wasn't doing that before so all of a sudden that's that's when that's when in my mind I knew and that's what I've continued to do 30, 30 plus. I think the only thing that I, I, I missed it by like, I don't know, $1,500 or something in January, um, which is, is not anything I'm going to complain about, you know, but I'm going to, I'm going to go more and more and more. And as I see the numbers go up, you'll see my numbers stay up and stay more regular. So um, 
I, I would say that's probably when that started for me, but then getting in a groove and figuring out what's comfortable for you and, and what you need to do is, is really different for everybody. Um, I bug the heck out of my, my upline. I mean, Mike and Noel hear me all the time and trust me. I mean, that's why Mike has to say stuff like that to me because I'm honest with him. If I'm struggling or if I'm struggling mentally or I'm thinking that I can't do something, he's the first one to tell me that's why he says stuff like that to me because he's like ah, Katrina ah. like stop 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 For, don't forget who you are and all of us have that in us we all are I mean that's Marcus Richardson right there that's Paul Minichino that's Megan Wood we are all awesome because that's the way God made us right to thrive and to be great and to be better and everybody has different skill sets. I can guarantee you 99% of the world population is more organized than me. Okay, that is not my skill set. Uh, neither is math. <laughs> There's a lot of things that I'm not good at. But the one thing that I know that I'm good at is loving people and talking to people and understanding people. So when, when all this started coming up with telesales and all that stuff, I was scared to death. You'll hear me say it over and over again. If you would like details, I will let you know privately. But I was. Everything is, everything is so scary. And you can hear about numbers and, oh, she's so awesome all day long. You know, if I saw some of the numbers that I had posted on Van and I had looked at them, I probably would have shut it off. And like, oh my God, you're so awesome. Yay for you. <laughs> Click, gone, right? <laughs> because we, we all feel that way sometimes. It's like, I, I, why am I not able to succeed? Why is this person always perfect? Well, I got news for y'all out there in the Alliance land. None of us are perfect. Um, and the more we can explain how we're not, at the same time as showing what our victories are, the more we'll be able to give information to people that helps them to get better. Because the goal is not for me to be awesome and the best all the time. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm very competitive. I like being up there and the best and I like having money in the bank. But if, if there is a huge amount of people who can take the lead of, of those of us who are doing a lot of numbers, right? It gets good for them, it gets good for us, it gets good for our company, and, and huge things happen. That's when, we, that's when we grow to a billion. That's when we do that. And I believe we're gonna see that and see a lot more from the Alliance throughout this. And it's not because we got any smarter, it's not because we got more products, we suddenly had more that we could offer, or we suddenly got better leads. That is not the reason you're going to see us get better, not even close. You're going to see us get better because even during, even during tough times like this, instead of quitting, instead of stopping, we continue to move and we continue to move faster and harder and stronger. And look at band, read on that for, you know, a few minutes, don't get stuck, right? But look at how many people are helping each other. Look at how many people are celebrating each other. And when it first started, you, you know, you saw the comments it was like, awesome, great, you rock, you know, which is nice, but they, you know, they, they went just, they were kind of very generic things, right? Now you keep looking at them, watch the progression of the comments that people are making. They're more and more and more personal. They are nicer. Um, geez, I mean, I'm seeing such love and such warmth and such encouragement from people all over the country. That's, that's where we're gonna get better. That's where we're gonna grow. That's where we're gonna blow up and write and do more and more and more because we are doing more because we feel like we have to. We're stepping up in this case and we're stepping up together, together. So, um, so a couple of things there. One, one of the things I saw you post on Van one time was one day you did 8,000, which is an incredible day. And then the next day you got blanked. And, and so what, what is it that, that kind of keeps your mind right? 
you know, not letting the 8,000 get too high because, I mean, we, we'd all be running through the streets naked if we wrote $8,000 in a day and, and not jumping off a bridge because nobody would do a deal with us that day. How, how do you, what are some things you do to kind of just stay level and just keep working your schedule? Well, I think one of the things that I've gotten better at, Noelle will laugh at me because um, I never used to do this at all. She's like, you did what? You thought, excuse me, who are you? <laughs> but I have gotten better at doing, um, at thinking of what am I doing today? So instead of looking back at yesterday going, oh, yesterday was awesome. I don't have to do anything today. I'm not, I'm not really thinking about that. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, you have to be able to celebrate yourself to an extent mm -hmm. because you are or, or celebrate an accomplishment, maybe not yourself so much but celebrate an accomplishment to an extent, but also if you, if you live there and you camp there, you're, you're not gonna be accomplishing anything else ever because that's just, that's, that's not, today is where we gotta live, today. So you're like, woohoo, moving on, next day, you know? And so I'm thinking on that day, you know what? I didn't do as much activity. I had several conference calls. I just kind of sat there and blanked out with a coffee cup in front of me for a long time. There was a lot of work that I wasn't doing that I needed to be doing. So I understood that for myself and then I moved on. So again, looking forward, okay, today, tomorrow, what am I gonna do tomorrow? Like I've got, I've got policies behind me from this week. And what that does is it's built my confidence so I don't feel freaked out about tomorrow, but I also know that I need to move on to tomorrow. Like as soon as I get off this call and eat something, cause I haven't had any food all day. You know what I really need to do is get on the phone. I need to get on the phone. And I know that if I focus on that, it's the numbers have come and come and come. But I'm focusing on I'm focusing on the the meat, so to speak, that I have the most um, chance of writing. So I'm doing the CRM first. I'm doing the current clients first. I'm doing my kit leads that I'm getting where they're calling on some current clients of my downline who has not who haven't been work working. Right. I'm doing all of that first that's getting my confidence up and that's building my confidence. And then I'm working through the rest of everything else, which allows me to perform better with everything else that I have. So I'm looking forward, looking forward, looking forward, but I'm already excited because I've got some success behind me. So I know that I can continue to move. That was probably a long way to answer that question. Sorry. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. So uh, we've asked the other ones, do you know how many current clients you have in your CRM? I pulled it up. Um, what it's showing me now is 1,196. Wow. And I, I feel like I have a few more hiding. So uh, <laughs> that, that's crazy. That. Um, so, so, uh, you know, just kind of wrapping up the call here. Uh, something else you said, I, I'm just curious. Do you believe your results came because your belief level got higher or did your belief level get higher because your activity and results got better? Um, the fluke as you say, of November mm -hmm. helped me to have the mentality of knowing, wait, I can do this. So the initially it was having some success. After that, it was continuing to work and do with that number in mind. Now that I knew it was possible, I wasn't just aiming for this number, I was aiming much higher. And that's what I think people mistake. I mean, you're not, you're not necessarily going to come out, especially as a new person and just bam, all of a sudden hit 30,000 one month and then realize you can do it. Um, you may, but, you, but you're probably not going to, but you can build on that. So, I mean, let's, let's say I, my, my goal is to write 5,000 in a week and I see, I see that I've set it, but now I need to raise my goal and raise the bar a little bit. So as my, as my performance gets better, my, my belief level can, can get built at that point in time till it's higher and higher and higher. Now that I've written 30, what do I want to do? 40, 50? Yeah, absolutely. 
Is it doable? Yes, it is. But it gets built up, I think, from there. And so I think you need some success somewhere. Find something that you can build on, but then build it and make it get bigger. And your mind can accomplish it, period. You'll figure out how to do it. Trust me, it's going to happen. And you probably won't even realize how you do it. It's just that powerful. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, so, guys, we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to wrap up the call with that. Thank you, Katrina, so much for joining us. And, and here's what I would tell you, Alliance family, is this. Uh, like Katrina just said, when she, when she got the results, it built her belief and she knew it was now possible. And for you, if you're brand new or if you've been with us for, for a hot minute and you're not where you want to be in business, you're not where you want to be financially, leverage our belief in you. Leverage the team's belief because here's what I know. If Megan could do it, if Paul can do it, if Marcus can do it, if Katrina can do it, if Adam and Beth Katz can do it, you can do it too. God's no respecter of person. The opportunity Andy Albright has created as level a playing field in the history of business as exists. And it's just up to each one of us to get our minds right, to quit listening to the voices in our head and start talking to ourselves the positive, uplifting talk that we know we are champions and, and we are more than conquerors and that we will win. And then just set the bar high and go after it. And if you fall a little short, that's okay. It's inside your circle, your attitude, your activity. It's all under your, under your control. So let, let's go out there and, and work inside the circle of you, inside the circle of me, and control those things and go out there and make a difference in somebody else's somebody else's world today um i'm so blessed to have these guys uh you know as, as panelists today i'm honored that i was able to interview you guys and, and just be part of this call thank you so much for joining us alliance nation we are done uh we got uh paul minichino is showing the plan tonight 7 p.m eastern time uh so invite one more person onto that business overview and and keep growing your business that way love you guys take care